Felt like I had church this morning. <laughs> Open up your box to the book of Psalm, please. Book of Psalm, 23rd chapter. I promise you I won't be before you long. Psalm 23. Very familiar. I'm sure most of you could spit this out of memory. But there's a verse here I want to hinge on this morning. It's that fourth verse. Psalm 23, 4. The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley, shadow, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I like to preach off the thought through the valley. Through the valley. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you all for the work you've already done. Ask Father, this morning you just have your way. Lord, that I won't get in the way of your work. God, Lord, you just anoint my lips and clay. God, you just revelate my mind, Father. I pray, Lord, you just shield us from distractions and hindrances this morning. God, Lord, that we can preach your word with an anointing of the Holy One. God, that we won't get in the way of your work. And God, I pray, Lord, that you just give us that strength, Lord, knowing that through the valley, God, you're with us. Thank you again, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. As we went to Winter Jam, we had a packed car. About so many, so many people was in there, a lot of joy, a lot of laughter. But uh, there was a time when we were rejoicing. There was a time that we were a little burdened. You know, many emotions went along that ride for me, that is. And uh, as we got there, I started realizing that a lot of us is going through some valleys. And I started realizing that this old writer talked about, uh, he says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I was thinking at a young age, I realized that there's many people in this world that's going through some valleys. And I was thinking that a young and old and like, you know, all different people around the world, sometime in your life you're going to go through some valleys. The Bible says, yea, though I walk. In other words, he's saying sooner or later, if you're not in a valley now, a valley's going to come your way. And he's saying, but though valleys are going to come in your life, but get this, he said, through the valley. And I was thinking about that word, oh, through. In other words, he's saying when God brings you to a valley in your life, he's not just going to leave you there and leave you stranded, but he's going to take your hand and going to take you through the valley. And I was thinking that there's many people here this morning, my heart's heavy this morning that we're going through some valleys, maybe something happened in our lives, and we come burdened and heavy hearted because we're going through the valleys. But can I tell you, you're just going through it, that you're not going to stay in the valley. You're not going to stay there forever. But praise the Lord, you're going through the valley. You say, preacher, preacher, you don't understand the valley I'm going through. Can I be honest? I don't know, but I know of one who does. I know of one who knows everything that's going on in your life. And he said if he brings you to it, he's going to bring you through it. You say, preacher, I got a couple points for this one. I won't be here before you long. He said, what's it going to take to get me through this valley? <laughs> but can I tell you, valley comes in all different shapes and sizes. Some a little deeper. Some a little colder. Some a little darker. Some a little rougher. I was thinking about, oh, I was sitting there and I was looking at old uh, uh, David and Goliath. And for some reason, I popped in my mind, and I flipped to it. And we all know the story of David and Goliath. He, he had a battle against him. He had a stand before old Goliath. And I was looking into that. I said, Lord, why are you bringing me to this? I started reading a little more. And it says when they pitched, they pitched in the valley of Eli. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. Old David went against the Goliath in his life. He went somewhere he couldn't do on his own. But can I tell you, he was in a valley in his life. But see, get this, old Goliath said, I'm going to come at you with all these weapons. But little old David, the shepherd boy, who wrote Psalm 23 for, he said, look, I come, and the battle is of the Lord. Can I tell you, that valley you're in, can I tell you, the Lord's going to fight for you. He's going to deliver you. Yes. The valley of Eli. Oh, maybe you're in a valley this morning. 
morning. What can I tell you? You're only passing through. You say, preacher, what, what's going to get you through the valley? Well, first off, you need the light. I'm telling you, if you come in this dark room, you're going to be tripping all over. In the darkness of a valley, I'm telling you, you get so lost in it, you get the tripping. You get the stumbling. You get to look around. You don't see no light around you. But the Bible says that ye are the light of the world. I don't think you realize that people come in here going through the valley, and they need some light in their life. And you have the light inside you. I feel preaching on me. Well, I'm telling them, you need to come in and shine your light before men, that they may glorify your Father in heaven. Light. The light of the church. And the light of the word. The Bible says his word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Hey, I'm glad when I'm going through the valleys. That is where it gets me through. Yeah. I remember a time when I was going through a rough patch of my hair, and my dad talked to me, and I remember what he does when he calmed down. Uh, he would give me a little pill to calm me down. It's not, it's nothing crazy. What you think? But it's just to calm your nerves. And I used to take it all the time. And I remember one time when I was going through a lot. I said, "Here, son, you need to take this to rest." And I remember looking on my countertop, and I see my Bible, and I said, "No, Dad." And I reached and grabbed it, and I held it to me. And I said, "This is what I need." I'm telling you, you're going through a valley this morning. You go ahead and grab on to the Word of God. I'm telling you, my wife's words can encourage me, but the Word of God, that's what's going to get me through a valley. I'm telling you, the light in my life is what's going to get me through a valley. Is there anyone, am I preaching to anyone this morning? You're going through a valley where you need the Lord. Man, I'm telling you, you need light. You need light of the church. You need light of the Word. Yes. You know what else you need? You need a lily. Yeah. Amen, brother. You know what my Bible says? My Bible says he's a rose of Sharon. Yes, it is. And the lily of the valleys. Yes. Not a word valleys, plural there. You know what he's saying? I'm going to go through many valleys. But he says there's only one lily <laughs> in all the valleys. Yeah. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm talking about the lily of the valley. I'm talking about when things get rough. Now get this. We want to go about these valleys. And yeah, then we get so hard that all we can do is focus on around it. Well, the writer says, though I walk through the valley. And I got to thinking about that. Why do you walk? Why don't you just run and get on out of there? Well, if you run, you can't notice the lily. I'm telling you, but if you walk, you notice the lilies. And you know when you walk, you get time to stop. Yeah. And you get the pick. Yeah. You ever been through a valley and they stop and they pick the lily of the valley. Yeah. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. When you're going through a hard time, sis. I went to up visit over yeah. Sister Shirley. I'm off, I'll say it real quick. And I remember going there, and once we came to the door for surgery, and first thing she said was, Praise the Lord. <laughs> You know what she did? That she got the yeah. lily of the valleys. Yeah. I'm telling you, she went through many valleys, but each time she comes in, she's yeah. praising God. How can you do that? She has the lily. Yeah. If she was running, you probably don't know the lily. But if you walk, <coughs> you're trying to smell the roses. Yeah. You know, lily has a good smell. Mm -hmm. Wonderful smell. Has anyone smelled a lily before? Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. There's a savior to it that you just can't get enough of. Now get this. There's an old story. I'm talking about this old man. He was going around and he seen this doe. I believe he was hunting. I believe he was hunting this old doe. He was up on a hilltop and he noticed this mama doe. And there was a bunch of uh, little baby does following her. And they went going around these mountains watching them for the longest time. Just watching them admiring them. Then as time went by, they started watching them a little more. Next thing you know, they started going down this mountain and they went to this valley. Now this valley was full of lilies. And what that mama doe, mama doe was doing is just walking right through it, you know, going about her journey, walking <coughs> through this life, going through that valley. Then all of a sudden, you have baby does jumping around and, the, you know, having a good time. Then all of a sudden, she stopped. Years went up, and she froze. And she looked around. And all of a sudden, she grabbed them babies. What she did is she put them down. Like, stay down and don't move. Next thing you know, she went around. She was frantic. She was running around, running around that valley, running around them flowers. You know, just going nuts. And that boy said, man, why in the world is he doing that? And he started noticing that. Then all of a sudden, he noticed this wolf come. She ducked. All of a sudden, that wolf came through and he said, man, that deer's going to die. Them babies are going to die. Next thing you know, that wolf came. Went right through that valley. 
and didn't even touch him. No, boys, so what in the world happened? And so he went down to the house nearby as he, as he got some of his things. He said, man, you're never going to believe what I've seen. I've seen this doe come and happen, and all these baby doves were leaping and jumping in this valley that they were going through. And all of a sudden, she stopped, and she was going frantic. And this wolf came and didn't even see him. So what in the world happened? He said, look, get this. <laughs> you know, we're preaching on me. You know that lilies take up a good smell. What she did <coughs> is when that wolf came, she ran around them lilies to stir up a smell. Yeah. Yeah. I'm preaching on me. Yeah. Stir up a smell so that wolf can't find it no more. Yeah. What can I tell you when you're going through the valley? You just need to grab a lily of the valley and say, Lord, I can't do it on my own, but I need your help. Yeah. That old devil himself, he walk right past you, not even see it. My rock and my fortress. I'm telling you, when things get rough in your valley, you run into the arms of Christ. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He's a lily of the valley. Yeah. Yeah. You know what brings out the smell of a lily? They say blowing on a lily will increase the smell of that flower. You can come shout with me here a minute. <laughs> You know when things smell a little better, get a little sweeter. Mm. When God leaves you in the situation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, when things are rough, <laughs> coming through that valley, next thing you know, you just get a fresh air. And you smell that lily. And next thing you know, you say, Lord, I know that was you. Has anyone been in that situation? That they're going through a valley, and all of a sudden the door opens, and you look up and say, Lord, I know that was you. No man yeah. could have done it. My mama could have done it. My daddy could have done it. Lord, that was you. Yeah. You know what he's doing? He's just blowing his breath. I'm telling you, God's breath can change the situation, brother. I'm telling you, God's breath can change the situation. If there's ever time that we need God's breath, it's now. Yeah. You know what I'm telling you when we go through those valleys? I don't know if you remember this, but the valley of dry bones. Yeah. <clears throat> I should have said that earlier. Yeah. Don't notice in the valleys. There could be death. The Bible writer said the shadow of death. You know what he's saying? It's coming close to death. He's seen the shadow of it. It was close. He didn't know what to do. It was darkness around him. He didn't know how to handle it. He didn't know which way to go. But he said, look. I will fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff they come for you. You know what he's saying? He didn't lean on things of this world to calm him. He didn't lean on an old bottle of Budweiser to calm him. He didn't lean on something to calm his nerves going through that darkness. But what he did, he said, Lord, I need you. Amen. He says, God, I need you right now. I'm going through a dark valley in my life. I know I'm only going through it, but God is too big for me to handle on my own. But he said, despite this valley I'm going through, I have a peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. about the peace of God that men can't give. Yeah. Man, I remember when I first gave my heart to the Lord. I remember I had such a peace. Can I tell you that peace is still going on today? Yeah. 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 The Bible talks about during battle, you can sleep. Amongst the battle. Yes. You say, how in the world do you do that? You don't see no one doing that. That's the peace of God. Amen. Maybe years more, you don't got that peace going through that battle. That old rider had that peace. Amen. He can do it, you can do it. Right. And you know what he can? He knew that God had his back. You see, that's what we need to get. See, when we're going through these battles, we can't do it on our own. I, t I talked to a, a, a sis when we went to a, we had a game night. We had a game night. Does anyone remember the game Pit? They don't remember, bro. I think it was made in the 1800s. It's a collectible now. He has it. Probably one of three in the world. But we had game night. Fun. I, I think every majority, almost all the youth here was there. A ton of people. And we had a good time. And I remember I had seen this girl. I've only seen her a few times. I said, hey, how you doing, sis? He said, well, so I'm getting a divorce with my husband. I kind of, I just looked at her and she, she didn't even say hi or hey. She just, she was saying, look, I'm going through about it. And as I was listening a little bit, 
She started to open up more. And I started to listen, listen. The next thing you know, the Lord started dealing with her. I started trying to encourage her the best I can. I gave her scripture. There's that light. I gave her that scripture. I tried to encourage her. They said, well, my church, they're not accepting me. I said, the old pastor, the pastor's wife won't even talk to me. I said, look, that church accepts you no matter what. Because we are the light of the world. He went, Amen. That's, 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 yeah. Amen. There's that light. She wasn't getting that light. I showed her the light in the situation. The next thing you know, she started crying. She said, I don't know why I'm crying. I said, that's the Spirit of the Lord speaking to you. Yeah. Yeah. What are you dealing with? I said, look, you know what you got to do? You're broken pieces. You got to quit holding on to them. You got to lay it down. You got to give it to the feet of Christ. But see, she said, no, I don't want to do that. In tears. She was right there, in tears. She said, no, I don't want to do it. I said, I said, listen, sis, you can't do it on your own. Only he can restore the years. Amen. I'll shine that light. She said, no, I don't want to do it. And the Lord said, you've done your part. Exactly. I said, what, what happened? She's going through a valley, but look, she wasn't seeking help. She was trying to reach for help, but she was reaching for the wrong help. And I try to guide it to the one who can bring life in that situation. <laughs> but she was the one that didn't want to pick up the flower. Man. It's like you bring a bouquet and say, look, this one's going to fix your problem, the lily. And they're like, no, I don't want it. But they're in tears, looking at the broken pieces. Man. Hey, that valley is a bunch of broken pieces. There's a bunch of broken bones, broken hearts. But I know one who can fix it. Man. I'm telling you, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else shall be added unto you. What are you saying, preacher? When you put him first, he puts the ducks in order. Amen. <laughs> I think we forget that. We want to put things before him. When in a situation, yeah, it will overshadow the situation. But see, if we just walk, take time, smell the rosy shit. Yeah. You realize that breath will come. Hey, so you know, the Lord, you got this. You got this. I want to ask Brother Jesse to come up front. I want you to play the guitar, brother. I want you to silently play in the chords. Do something a little differently tonight. Maybe you're here and you're going through a valley. That old writer had peace in that valley. You know why? Because he knew God was on his side. David, David had peace amongst Goliath. You know why? Because he knew that the battle was going to be As he softly plays, I'm going to ask for every head bow. No one's looking around. And I'm going to ask if there's someone here that's coming through a battle. You just say, Preacher, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me, Preacher? Won't you lift your hand? Oh, bless that hand. <laughs> 